All right, today we're going to be talking about um, the properties of materials. We've already talked about material classification. Um, this is now about how those materials are classified using what properties. First thing we got, um, we got a light background here, so remember that's especially important for the guys who are in HL right now. Um, this is taken directly from the new uh, IB standards. Primarily they're concerned with um, how scientific discovery is leading to new materials and you're going to find out a lot of these materials um, that are being discovered are not new elements <coughs> or anything. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, they're talking about composites like smart materials, um, in incorporating new materials into classic designs like the example that is often cited here is using um, carbon fiber to make tennis rackets rather than wood or aluminum. Um, those are uh, composite materials. Um, relating to international mindedness, uh, a lot of these smart materials are um, developed in specific regions and countries, um, and a lot of those uh, regions and countries will export production to uh, other countries where production can be tackled uh, cheaper. Um, TOK. Uh, look at vocabulary that's used in a lot of this stuff. Uh, is it the case that shaping of knowledge is more dramatic in some areas of knowledge than others? Okay, uh, now uh, let's define a few terms here. These are known as the physical properties. There's physical properties and then um, there are other properties. Now the physical properties we have density, which is mass per unit of volume. So you should know uh, how to indicate density or how to write it down using uh, SI. Uh, electrical resistivity, okay, the ability of an object to resist the flow of electricity. Okay, the more, resi more electrical resistivity it has, the more of an insulator it would be when comparing insulators and conductors. Thermal conductivity is the ability of something to transfer heat thermal expansion, the extent to which something expands with when heated, and hardness, uh, the, the physical ability of a material to resist deformation, like denting. Not necessarily cutting, but like denting. Uh, if you're to hit something with a hammer and you get a dent in it, then it's not terribly hard. Like you can do that with wood all the time. If you've ever put in a nail and you miss the nail and you hit the wood around it, you get a little dent in the wood. That's because wood isn't very hard. These plates right here, you, if, you've, uh, if you've looked carefully, you might have seen them on bridges. These are actually um, expansion plates that are put on bridges because uh, it, when, when bridges are, especially in our climate, um, there's a lot of uh, temperature changes, temperature fluctuations from uh, summer to winter and back and forth. So what happens is you get cold air that can go underneath the bridge, so the bridge gets colder faster than the ground around it. So what happens is that bridge will, will thermally shrink. Everything has a little bit of thermal expansion and contraction. The bridge will actually contract and these plates allow the bridge to move a little bit, allow it to contract without creating all sorts of uh, potholes along the bridge from, from things expanding and contracting. So that's what these things are. Why are these properties important? Um, well, you'd be using, you'd be need to pay attention to density if you're making packaging for like a product. Um, you, you sell something for portability and for for uh, lightness, then you need to be very aware of what the density is. For example, if you're making like a hiking backpack or something, and you're using a, you use, you need to make like a tube framing for it. A lot of hiking backpacks have that. You wouldn't want to use a material that's extremely dense because then it would be very heavy. So you use something light and and with a very low density like, like carbon fiber or aluminum. Uh, electrical resistivity is important when selecting materials for conductors and insulators. And then thermal conductivity is important uh, for things that must conduct heat or must insulate heat. It's you know, important for thermoses that they're very aware of what the thermal, the thermal uh, conductivity of the materials is. Um, thermal expansion is important because when you have dissimilar metals, um, not just metals, uh, but dissimilar materials, um, they, when they're joined, then they expand at different rates. And actually, this property is used um, to the advantage for um, thermostats. 
Our thermostats don't have temperature sensors in them. Well, they make a temperature sensor using what's called a bimetallic strip, where you have two strips of different metals, where one metal, and then they're, they're bonded together. One metal expands faster than the other metal. So what happens is, as the metal expands, um, it'll actually curl. Okay, it'll curl and uncurl. So you have a spiral that's a bimetallic, uh, two, two, bi uh, two metallic strips, and one, one of them expands, the curl straightens out. When it's cooled, it curls back up. Hardness is important where you need to, something that's resistance to penetration or scra uh, scratching. Floor tiles. Floor, any, fl any kind of flooring needs to have really good hardness or else it's going to scratch up really badly. Mechanical properties of materials, you have tensile strength, stiffness, toughness, and ductility. Uh, tensile strength is the ability of something to resist tension. Stiffness is the ability of a material to res resist bending. Toughness is the ability of a material to resist force without breaking. Toughness is kind of tricky because it's hard to, um, it's, sometimes it's hard to separate toughness and hardness. And then ductility is a ability of a uh, material to be deformed under tensile strength and to be formed into a wire. Um, there's also malleability, which is the ability of a material to be flattened out, but they don't really address it um, here for some reason. Um, uh, tensile strength is important when you need to select the like, cables. Like you want, you want designers need to make sure that their elevator cables have a really good tensile strength. Um, stiffness, again, we need to maintain shape of something. So like framing for aircraft fuselages uh, and wings, um, they don't want it to deform uh, easily and lose its shape. Toughness, where abrasion and cutting can take place. Uh, ductility, when metals are extruded um, and need to be shaped plasti uh, plastically. So like wires, copper is very ductile. It's a material that can be rolled out and, and turned into a wire very easily. Then there's aesthetic characteristics get, that go along with these as well. Um, you have um, these, these primarily are related to food, so we're not really going to be addressing them. Um, they, yeah, I don't really know why this is in here, but they wanted this to be addressed. Um, senses uh, are usually difficult to quantify. Um, people's reactions to in, in like sights, uh, sense, tastes, textures, and colors. Uh, they're a lot of times based just on personal preferences. Um, so that is the end of topic 4.2. You guys got any questions for any of those? Have you heard about the properties of materials before? Yeah. Okay. Some of them. Some yeah. of them. So there's, there's no big surprises. Okay. So, um, and that is that.